Okay. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, developers. We are glad to have you here at the Microsoft Community Corner for African Developers. We are really, really glad to have you. Um, and uh, we have a whole panel of presenters just willing to come in, share their knowledge, share their resources, and just generally have fun with you in this Community Corner. Um, a little quick housekeeping. Um, you can always ask questions at any point in time. There's a very lovely sidebar uh, to, your, to your right where you can quickly chat up a question and we receive it on our end and we'll be able to respond to you. By way of introduction, um, Lawrence Modoga. I look after the developer ecosystem across Africa, and we are so glad to have you here for this uh, amazing, amazing session. We have quite a panel of presenters today and uh, a few surprise guests. And so I'll invite presenters very quickly, one by one, uh, to give us a very short, quick introduction. Um, and I'll save my surprise guests for last. So um, I'll start with the Microsoft team, the guys who are helping me on the back end and really, really uh, supporting this event. So uh, Dara, I'll put you first. Please do introduce yourself. All right, can everyone see me? Yeah. So. Hi everyone, my name is Dara Oladakpo and I work as a customer success engineer on the Microsoft for Africa team. What that means in simple English is that I help customers, enterprise customers and SME customers and partners to uh, leverage Azure and Azure DevOps for developer productivity. I also support them and I also work with upskilling these customers in Azure, Azure DevOps and any training needs they have. And this, thank you, Dara. This wouldn't be a community corner if we didn't have an amazing set of community panelists to also join us and share their experiences as well. And so I'll throw it over to the community guys. Very quickly introduce yourselves and uh, let's do it. So, Shay, I hope you don't mind if I put you first. Yeah. Um... Hello everyone, uh, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you're calling from. Uh, my name is Sheyi Olua Omeju, and um, I'm part of the community lead in Nigeria. And uh, what we actually do was um, to bring uh, Microsoft uh, stack closer to the grassroots, and our target is developers, and sometimes we mix with the IT and also students. So I have um, a lot of uh, user group, which is the breakout out of our community, which is my MCC Nigeria Tech community. And uh, they will introduce themselves one after the other. They're all leads in their own. And we have about 10,000 users that we are currently, um, uh, act, that are currently active that were working with us. So I leave it to all the community lead to to introduce themselves one after the other. Okay, so um, Toriola, I hope you don't mind if I ask you to go next. Uh, sorry, you're, you're muted. Oh, thanks for that. Hi everyone, my name is Toriola Lajimoke. Um, just like she said, I'm part of the community lead for the MCT Niger. Um, basically, my group is the M365 user group, and then one of the things we also try to do in the community is to see how we can drive the uh, Microsoft solution products knowledge down to um, IT professionals and also developers that we can, and also um, students. Also, one of the things also we, I mean, we worked on why during this uh, COVID-19 break was to see how we could also um, develop something that could integrate with Microsoft Teams, even while we're trying to drive adoption and, and consumption of Teams during the break, during this COVID-19 break. So we're able to also work on something, um, an app that, that could also help to drive that and be able to make employees communicate with some of their staffs while they're working remotely. So. That's basically what I do. Okay, glad to have you, Toriola. Um, going to hand it over to you, Ahmed uh, Oyelowo. 
Hi everybody. Uh, my name is Ahmed Oyelowo, and uh, I'm a Microsoft Certified Trainer, and uh, I basically focus in uh, Power BI. So I'm a Power BI Trainer and Consultant. So I happen to lead one of the groups in Nigeria, one of the users group, which is a uh, Nigerian Power BI Professionals User Group, where we basically tend to answer people's questions on our various uh, instant messaging groups on WhatsApp, Telegram, and uh, Kaizala as well. So our focus basically is to be able to quickly provide answers to people's questions once they get stuck while they work on their uh, Power BI reports. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ahmed. Uh, Michael, I hope you don't mind if I ask you to go next. All right, so hi everyone and uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Michael Olafusi and I am Microsoft MVP, also an MCT and the community that I lead is majorly focused on the Microsoft Excel, the new tools coming up, and also on Power BI. So we are active on Meetup because that's where everyone is together and then on some instant messaging platforms. And also I try to take the angle of improving the development aspect of uh, those tools. So creating apps like the new uh, JS, JavaScript adding in Excel and the new Office adding them. Uh, because not so many people know that those things exist and they still think everything is in the VBA, that's where they can achieve um, automation. So we try to show people those new things. And we try to do some kind of uh, annual, you know, everybody together across Nigeria, even sometimes we get people from neighboring countries to, to partake in our events. So thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Michael. Uh, Ogundare, um, please go ahead. Hi everyone, I'm Olumide Ogundari. I'm a Microsoft student partner from Nigeria and I'm representing NSTs in Nigeria for this session. Um, just in line with Microsoft's main mission to empower every individual on the planet to achieve more, uh, we key into this vision as NSTs in Nigeria and what we do is to uh, empower both ourselves, our students and even young children uh, in Nigeria. And basically, we've been able to organize various events and hackathons uh, relating to Microsoft technologies. And not just that, we've been also able to um, empower young children within the age of 12 and 18, helping them to learn um, various AI-focused Microsoft technologies to build solutions. And uh, we are currently doing a mentorship for them to actually help them solve problems and apply for Imagine Cup Junior. So uh, lots of things that we have done, uh, we've been able to reach over 2,000 students all across Nigeria. And I'm really happy about what we are doing. I really want to do more. Nice. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Ogundare. Um, Deji, you're up next. Hi. Good day, all. My name is Ayo Deji Folani. I'm actually a Microsoft Certified Trainer and also Microsoft most valuable professional on data platform. So I'm actually the community lead for MCT Niger Power BI user group. So this is a community that has over a thousand members in Lagos, Nigeria, Abuja, Nigeria, and in Mbara, Uganda. And we've been doing some great stuff around developing fresh believers in power bi and we're evangelizing also to schools we are professionals as part of us and we do a lot and lot of training we have our monthly meetups we just completed a 10 days power bi made easy and we are launching forth every saturday power bi saturday very soon in fact this saturday thank you very much thank you thank you very much and last but not least um, Wale, please uh, do tell us a bit about yourself and then we'll introduce our surprise guests. Hi, good afternoon everyone. My name is um, Adewale Yusuf. I'm a Microsoft Certified Trainer. I'm also a Business Intelligence Analyst with Dbram Consulting. Um, I'm gracious to be part of a team that leads Nigeria Path Platform User Group in Nigeria. 
we are interested in bringing together people that are interested in power platform technology, including business and IT professionals who have interest in Power BI, Power Apps, Power Automate, and Power Virtual Agents. We also host our user group once in a month in Lagos and on your state, Nigeria, and we are showcasing some of the new Microsoft technologies and we are giving an example on how people can improve using Microsoft products in their various uh, work. We also be launching our Power of Saturday very soon and I'm glad to meet you all. Thanks, everyone. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very, very, very much, Wally. Um, when I got a few responses a couple of days ago from a few very interesting people. I was like, hey, how do I introduce uh, these ladies and this gentleman to the amazing developers across the continent? And so I have three really amazing guests um, and I'll introduce them, ask them to say a few words, and then we'll jump right into the meat of this event. And first off the list and uh, really amazing gentleman, you might know him as the lead designer of C Sharp for Microsoft, is none other than Mads Torgerson. Hi, Mads. Hey, everyone. It's great to be here. I'm uh, joining you guys from Seattle, and uh, it's, pitch, it's pitch dark out here still, uh, very early morning. Um, I'm, uh, um, as was said, I'm, I'm working on the uh, design of, uh, of C Sharp. Uh, so, Every new version of uh, C Sharp, uh, those language features that come in, um, that's uh, that's what I work with every day. And um, I'm really excited to join here and um, and see some of what uh, this community is working with. Uh, unfortunately, I have to leave uh, early to uh, go give my my build talk. Um, so um, of course, you should stay here. You should not come and watch me. But uh, <laughs> yeah, very, very excited to be here. I got some Kenya in my cup and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm ready to raise the roll. OK, thank you. Thank you very much, Mads. Happy to have you. Um, our next guest is someone who I haven't actually met before. Um, her name is Maria. She is an amazing presenter and would like to have her on the call. Hi, Maria. Hi, Lawrence. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Maria Nakaga. I am so excited to be on this call. I am a Ugandan living in New York, and I work on the Visual Studio and .NET team, where I work on something called .NET Interactive. And what .NET Interactive is, it's a way for people to take .NET in all these unexpected places. So if you go to Docs and you see a runnable snippet, that's me. And if you uh, watched Scott's keynote yesterday and you saw people writing .NET code in teams that was me as well so i'm really excited to be on this call with all my fellow africans so thank you so much for having me thank you very much maria you've mentioned something about scott's keynote yesterday yeah. and our last and of course very well known surprise guest is none other than scott hanselman himself hi scott hello hello <laughs> I'm up at the crack of four in the morning because I love you all so very much and I'm very excited to be here to to learn from you all. Thank you. We are glad to have you. OK, cool. Let's do this. So. Um, here we go. I am just going to share this very quickly. So the Africa Community Corner is a session where we're going to do two key things. One is I want us to be inspired by the work of others. And so we'll be showcasing some of the amazing work that's being done by communities across the continent. This year, I've picked one community from one region to actually come in and showcase the amazing work they're doing. But the most important thing for me is I also want you to feel challenged. I want you to leave here thinking, what can I do better? What can I improve? Where can I grow? That's the key goal I have today for all of us. And our agenda is going to be very simple. I think we've already walked past the first one. That's the introductions. And next, we're going to walk into the highlights. Africa is on fire. And the fact is that African developers rock. And I think we need a lot more of them. You guys are out there building real solutions to real problems. Someone once asked me, 
why do you think we should invest more into software as a continent? And if you think about it, let's think of it from a macroeconomic perspective. Software development is one of those skills that requires very little to walk into and to succeed in. You need skill done. You need a computer. You need an internet connection. And last but not least is the will to find a problem and solve it. Compare that to a doctor who needs to spend six, seven years in university learning um, on cadavers and actually working on that. Compare that to a civil engineer who needs a government to go in and invest in building roads. Software engineers have the capability to change the continent. And this is why I love African developers because more than ever this year we've seen the growth of amazing startups solving food logistics guys like Twigger Foods and the work they're doing and copper and providing solar uh, power um, there's a truck logistics company of completely forgotten the name uh, in Nigeria and the work they're doing there. We've seen the rise of partners who are helping these companies deploy their software, some of whom are actually here with us today on this session. You guys are changing not just the face of the continent, but the face of the planet. And yes, sometimes our problems seem unique and different, but I think that's what makes it a really interesting challenge is we've seen you developers rise up to the challenge and build and actually get a lot of these problems solved. And we need a lot more of you. And this is where community comes in. So let's talk a bit about community. This year has been a very good year for African tech communities. Firstly, is we've seen the rise of a lot of Azure tech communities. I'm very selfish, I love Azure, and we've seen a lot of growth there. Um, I'll share my screen in a second, so you can see where you can actually go and find um, the tech community that's nearest to you. And I want a lot more of these communities to spring up and, uh, and drive that growth because we learn from each other. Another key thing that we've seen is inclusivity has become a key priority. There are amazing communities out there driven by women in technology. I'll give a shout out to developers in Vogue, the African women in technology, and a lot of other amazing groups who have gone out of their way to actually go in and bring in groups of people who would not have been reachable otherwise. Microsoft itself has invested in the LEAP program in Africa to try and get female developers upskilled and so that we can place them in various places and we'll touch a bit on this. This has been a great year for communities and their growth. Another third thing that we've really seen is the breadth of topics that you guys have gone into. We've seen deep dives into IoT and in this continent that makes a huge difference because if you don't have the infrastructure to reach a place maybe all you need is a tiny device and you're able to go there and walk around that. We've seen the growth of AI and machine learning communities. Um, the AI Kenya community is one that we've worked with recently and they've been doing amazing work. Data Science Nigeria is another really, really powerful one. But beyond AI and ML, we've seen the growth of automation communities, the power groups that uh, are slowly coming up. And here I'll give a shout out to Samuel Adrani in Ghana, um, Franco Doom, Abu Konde. You guys are doing amazing work around the power platform in Azure. We see you and we are really, really grateful for the work that you are doing. And that's not the end of it all. We've seen a huge, huge growth in what I'd call tech superstars. We have seen new MVPs in the region. We were starved for MVPs, and now we have six new people who've actually joined our MVP roster. And what does it take to be an MVP? It's a simple recipe. A side of community work, a small bit of uh, technical skill, just kidding, a lot of technical skill, and of course the willingness to go in and train people around you. This has been a good year for MVPs, and I'll tell you this, you can never have enough. And so we are looking to you to be our new MVPs. We are looking to you to help us grow new MVPs so that you can go out there and represent. Could you be our next MVP? As you listen to this, I hope the answer is yes. And so I'm going to switch over to my screen uh, really, really quickly so I can show you some of the things that 
you can possibly uh, start to use uh, to grow uh, your communities. So firstly, let's start with this. I'm going to switch here. This is our MVP homepage. Uh, you'd be surprised how many people don't know about this. Um, this is where you get all the information you need to be an MVP. I tried to fit all our new MVPs into one slide. That did not go well. And so I decided instead to show you where you can come and find an MVP in your region. And it's quite simple. Go in, click find an MVP and select your country. Um, this year we've seen MVPs from Nigeria, from Senegal, and from Ghana. So I'm going to just put that in there and voila. And there are many more who might have slipped past my radar. And there you go. These are your MVPs. And of course, since I'm from Kenya and I don't want the Kenyans to hang me by my bootstraps, I'm also going to put in our Kenyan MVPs as well. And we have a lot more MVPs across the region. And gentlemen, ladies, we need a lot more. These are the familiar faces. These are the guys you can reach out to. Pick any of them and you can easily hop in, click on someone, find the, their links down here and give them a shout out. All these guys are highly skilled and highly capable. And so please do drive that conversation. I've mentioned a bit about Azure Tech communities. Um, on meetup.com, we actually have a page dedicated to Azure technical communities, and maybe we need to talk a bit more uh, about this. Um, you'll see sadly that Africa is not as lit up as the other regions. Um, however, it's good that we have a few places slowly lighting up. And this isn't just for Azure communities. This is also true for .NET communities. In fact, we have a lot more .NET communities than Azure communities. So kudos to you .NET guys, we see you. And we love this growth uh, and we love the work that you guys are doing. So be proud of yourselves. I'd like to see a lot more red dots here. And uh, yeah, let's let's do this. OK, so I'm going to switch back to my slides here very quickly. There we go. And uh, sorry about that. Voila, good. And let's talk about a few things that happened this year that we thought were interesting. The first one, and I believe everybody on this call is aware of this one, is we got data centers on the continent. Finally, we've been asking for this for years, and here it is. The ability to actually access data on the continent without having to deal with ping and lag times that are horrifyingly insane. We now have two new Azure regions in South Africa, that's Johannesburg and Cape Town. What about the other countries, you might be asking? We have edge nodes across the continent, in Kenya, in Nigeria, parts of West Africa. We have a, quite a huge number of edge nodes that allow you to basically interact way, way faster with our services. So that was one huge plus. But we've gone beyond that. Microsoft said, we have confidence in the developer ecosystem in Africa. We believe that African developers can build world-class products. And Microsoft invested in the ADC, or what that's what we call it. It's the Africa Development Center. This is a center where Microsoft is hiring engineers, much like yourselves, to build future products. And I'm not talking about future products quote unquote, for Africa, no. These are guys building the core of Windows. These are guys building uh, mixed reality products. These are guys building the products that you will most likely be using in the future. And we have two sites, that's Kenya, one in Kenya and one in Nigeria, and we are always hiring. So please keep an eye out. And who knows, you might be our next Microsoft engineer. You might be the next guy uh, leading this session and I'd be very, very happy to have you here. And the next thing that I don't want to forget is the community work that the ADC has been driving. We've seen amazing sessions through the open source uh, festival uh, and the OSCA team. Uh, I'll actually give a, a shout out to Adora and the amazing presentations she's done around the HoloLens. We've seen the Kenya team uh, push the Microsoft graph in ways we haven't seen before. Um, and uh, a big shout out to David, Monica, uh, Betty Rose, amazing work you guys are doing. The developers are really psyched. And 
So the ADC is a developer community and they are looking to find ways to plug into your communities. So please do reach out and please give them a chance. And of course, I wouldn't be speaking here if I didn't mention the amazing For Africa team. The For Africa team has been on the ground working and empowering Africans everywhere. We've had internship programs through Interns for Africa. We've built strategic partnerships with organizations, both in terms of training and in terms of uh, building our SMEs and building small businesses, large businesses. We have ongoing training partnerships that are actually happening. I know right now, as of this very moment in Kenya, um, we're running a training program with Moringa and Andela to try and get as many people trained on Azure and a huge number as well certified on the same. For Africa also runs a very vigorous startup program. And so there's all these things happening on the continent right now. It's a very active and a very, very beautiful space. And so when we talk about Africa, I see it as a melting pot of all these amazing activities, these sparks of genius happening and bringing you all together. But as I mentioned at the beginning, Today is a day of learning from each other. I couldn't sit here and talk about all the amazing things that Microsoft is doing, but this will not be a community corner if we didn't talk about the amazing work that communities are doing. This wouldn't be a community corner if we didn't showcase some of the amazing work that communities are doing. And so, and I'll state this, this is not an endorsement of only one community. This is just a showcase of what is possible. I have seen the amazing work being done across the continent. And hopefully through the lessons we learn here, we'll be able to not only amplify, but gain and also add more onto these experiences. And so as I pause my rambling, I'll hand it over to Shay himself to introduce his team, uh, which they already have, and to jump into some of the amazing work that the communities in Nigeria have been doing. And yes, I'll hand it over to you, uh, Shay. Yeah, thank you, Lawrence. Um, thank you for that great presentation, showing the strength we have as a community and how we are trying to reach out to the African folks. So, as uh, Lawrence said, the MCT Niger, we have over 10,000 um, active um, users and our, our process and our mission is to reach out to the grassroots and uh, to bring up developers from the raw and the crude area and make them to be more integrated with Microsoft solution. And uh, we caught across over 13 to 14 user group. Uh, we segregate ourselves in bit so that we can reach out to the technology, not just about the technology, bring out and harvest out from there the proper development that can easily be issued to Microsoft products. Invariably, um, each of these user group has their own target and um, that target is to change and to be able to develop and to be able to bring out solution. And this year, even the COVID-19 period gave us a big uh, booster in times of training. We did what we call a um, virtual training series across this user group. And that uh, they were able to also use that same to bring out project which they use to change the face of uh, what we do. So I will give each of them to um, introduce themselves and talk about the user group which they have done earlier, but they can just quickly talk about their user group and what they are doing in the user group. Okay, so I'll start with me. Yeah. Um, I have everyone. Thank you very me. much. I can see my slide up there. So my name once again is Ayodeji Folani, the community lead for Power BI user group. So it's a community of BI professionals, beginners and students with the major aim to develop and connect with ourselves 
So majorly what we do, we have our physical presence in three locations, in Lagos, Nigeria, in Abuja, Nigeria, and also we started something recently in Uganda. So we are in Umbrara, and also the most Mbara University of Science and Technology, where we met a lot of students and within a few minutes, they've been flying application within the school. And most challenging part, I actually met a medical doctor that she had been trying to pull up an application, but sincerely within a few minutes, she was able to put the uh, thought into an app using Power App. So we have our monthly meetups. So we, we just completed the 10 days Power BI Made Easy. It's a wonderful series where people connected all over the world from different country continents. And we came up with a, a project and the, the project was wonderful. And also we're planning to start our Power BI Saturday. This will be coming up every Saturday, 3 to 4 p.m. So we do regular support in our user group, Kaizala group, WhatsApp group, and other social media platform. So basically that's what we do in this user group. I would like the next user group to come up. Hi, right, Yolana, you are up. Hello there, my name is Olana. I am co-lead for the Dev Data and AI user group here in Nigeria. As a team, our mission is in line with Microsoft to empower every individual and every organization to achieve more. We are a group of young, high-spirited people and with strengths in software development, data, artificial intelligence, and IoT. So we have come together to first share knowledge with the enthusiasts and secondly, to build solutions to help our community. Currently, we are attending or we have organized, um, we have been able to organize virtual meetups to actually impact knowledge on our group members so that to work on solutions to be able to help our community. So we have um, topics and sessions around the developers platform and also we have um, sessions around the data platform, IoT and artificial intelligence. So far, our meetup is starting come Saturday through a period of five days to a, a period of say two weeks. And in these sessions, links will be shared to individuals and they will be able to attend these meetups from the different homes. So we're working on a couple of projects soon. I would not want to say much about that, but do look out for us as we'll be presenting new solutions for different individuals to use in our community first, then we'll extend it to Nigeria at large and to the world. Thank you. Michael, you're up. Hello everyone and um, uh, my community is Microsoft Excel user group, though uh, there are a few other communities that have come up from out, out of this large group because we've been around for about uh, five years, the group, and uh, over those time, Power BI has come out of it. There's the new Power site to Excel, the Power Query, the Power Pivot, and um, we largely hold our meetings and coordinate our events via the meetup.com. So if you go on meetup, you will be able to search us out, the Nigeria user, Excel user group. And uh, I need to even mention the people that actually make this happen. So I'm just one of the team and um, we have coverage across Nigeria and the uh, key people who make sure things work out well and make sure that people are getting to know how to use Excel in different aspects of their, of their lives, of their work. Some, that's what they do day in, day out. Some, it's born out of interest. And uh, so there's Charles Otogile, there's Evans Otalo, there's Victor Moore, there's uh, Ahmed Oyelowo. There are many other people who make this happen. And um, 
We currently are 2,166 members strong on the meetup, but like I mentioned, there are many other smaller segments of it that has come out from that larger meetup community. We're active on Telegram, we're active on WhatsApp. And the good thing is a lot of our members are beginning to embrace using YouTube and using the social media to reach a broader a broader audience space. So we find out that uh, there are people from around the world who watch the videos of our meetup events of how people are able to use Excel, use the new power tools, use some aspect of Power BI to achieve a lot more and to also discover those things they have that you know they struggle to use because they were not aware of. And that's largely what the user group is about. Uh, thank you. So okay. the next slide. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, once again. My name is um, Adewale Yusu. I'm part of the leaders of Nigeria Power Platform User Group. I'm just part of the leader. We have some exciting people that I would like to mention. Like we have David Brown, we have um, David Abu, we have um, Ezekiel Adeshawe, which are part of the members of the user group. So in the user group, basically what we do is that um, we bring up um, members from which are interested in power platform technologies, including business and IT professionals, who also have interest in Power BI, Power Apps, Power Automate, and Power Virtual Agent. We bring them together, and we normally have a monthly meetup once in a month. We have one in the uh, Lagos, and we are planning to have another one in the Badon. We have the support of D-Brand Consulting, Lagos Business School, and um, Credit Direct. Also, we are planning to launch our Power Hub Saturday, which will be running for every Saturday to support people during this COVID-19 period. Then we're also launching Analytic Made Simple, which will be happening once in a month. Uh, this user group is just about enlightening people about um, Power Platform. Thank you. The next, please, uh, Ahmed. Are you, are you low? Hi, everybody, once again. So, my name is Ahmed Oyelo, like I mentioned earlier, and uh, I happen to be I happen to be the lead for Nigerian Power BI Professionals User Group. So, the Nigerian Power BI Professional User Group is a local community that we try to provide the fastest possible solutions and support to our users. Basically, those are people that use Power BI for their everyday job. So this is why we leverage of instant messaging apps like uh, Kaizala, Telegram, and WhatsApp. So take, for example, if you have someone working on Power BI that gets stuck somewhere and the person basically just sends in a message to any of those groups with details of what their challenges are, and there is always someone on the group and experience control to provide answers to uh, some of these solutions. What really that is my heart is that sometimes we go as far as uh, going to schedule uh, online calls so that we can share our screens to tackle some of the challenges that these are community members face and usually in instances like that we always make sure that we go back to the group and post the steps that we are taking to solve all the solutions. In some cases, it has to be maybe some kind of dash code so that everybody can learn from each other's challenges and how we are able to move from solving one person's problem. And then whenever anybody uh, is, has something that is similar to that, you can always make reference to the previously solved problems. So the community is doing a lot of a lot of job in helping people to quickly get back to progress. So after getting stuck somewhere, so this is something that will always require, you always need to have support. So every now and then you get stuck somewhere, you can easily just message us on the, uh, either Kaizala, WhatsApp or Telegram and there will always be someone that is going to give you uh, a, solu uh, a solution to that's your challenge. So thanks, let's move on to the next user group. Okay, so thanks, Ahmed. Fony is not here, I guess. Uh, I, so, I think uh, uh, if yeah, she's so not here, yeah, we, we can just briefly can talk, just about talk about it. Yeah, so this is Nigeria Power Hub Suja Group. It's a community of power platform as well. That has a provision of citizen developers, 
who are passionate about making the world a better place through technology. So they are currently running a program on the um, Power Cities every Saturday, and then another program called Textilers for Women. So it's a community of power apps, yeah. So if I go to the next slide, so that is not uh, available. So this is also a community of Dynamic 365 user group. So they are running a Dynamic user group and they are having their event every Saturday as well. They are having their monthly meetup as well and they are also running webinars. So for everybody that is interested in um, Dynamic 365, you can actually join the group. It's an awesome uh, community. Yeah, I'm not sure Paul is here as well. Yeah, I so Paul uh, leads the. I can take Paul. Uh, Paul leads the uh, Azure Azure group, and uh, the Azure group specifically target Azure developers, system developers, and also bring up new one. The target is to run a series that can highlight the advantage you can get from the cloud technology and looking at what Microsoft Microsoft have done for Africa. We leverage your needs to increase and um, improve the use and bring professional students and developers to use it and know how to use it. Next slide, please. You see? Okay, so I'm okay. Please unmute your oh. mic. Finally, um, my name is Toriola Okay, Sorry about the first time I jump in. Um, I lead the M365 user group for Nigeria. And basically the user group is all about um, helping IT professionals, helping security administrators, or, and also helping um, students to be able to um, embrace the Microsoft productivity tools and even at that, how they can also integrate um, custom apps and all of that into um, most especially things like the Microsoft Teams. So um, we hold our meetups um, every day actually, but um, we're, we're going to start another series. We hold our meetups every day from five to six. Um, the last time we had was like um, a week ago, but we're going to um, start a new series and the new series will be for um, twice in a week starting from 1st of June. So um, the group is actually um, as, as, as actually a student, as actually a, a IT professionals, you know, we're able to answer questions on Office 365, on EMS, on Windows 10, and then is embracing how young people, most especially students, can also um, build some custom solutions into Windows or um, Windows 10 and then um, and Microsoft Teams. So recently what we tried to do also, which I'm going to give a a lot of shout outs to some of the core members of the community like TT, like um, James and Willie, Bassi. This team were able to work together and they were able to build something real quick for um, Microsoft Teams. I mean, like an app for Microsoft Teams because of the um, um, pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic. So it's a great, it's a great, user group that I would want anyone to come in. We share ideas, we solve problems, we assist in whatever way you might have any issue. Thank you. Olumide, you are hot. Hello, um, Olumide Ogundai once again, um, representing Microsoft Student Partners in Nigeria. Um, we are young, innovative student uh, leaders and we organize events uh, across various states in the country. As Microsoft Student Partners, uh, our major vision is to um, impact individuals in our various in, uh, schools to achieve more. We are currently uh, about 76 spread across various states in the country, and each of these student partners uh, organize events for their school students, and they try to get young students to build stuff with technology. Uh, we've had a lot of projects um, come out from our communities. We had um, the community from University of Lagos do the COVID-19 bot, 
uh, to solve um, awareness issue in the country. Um, yeah, we've also been able to not just impact students in our community, but also young, ch young children in our community by mentoring them to build solutions. Uh, currently, we have um, about 40 children between 12 and 18 that we are mentoring uh, to learn AI skills and to also build solutions. And we are currently mentoring them to uh, apply for the Imagine Corp Juniors. And this is just a little of uh, all the amazing work we've been doing. Right now, um, we are not limited to the current pandemic. We've been organizing online events. Um, and you can find us on our meetup page to catch all our events. Thank you. OK. Um, well, we, we also want to share some impact now. Our strategy as a group was to be able to reach out to the grassroots, bring out the best from those grassroots, and also help give them the enable environment to develop solution. And uh, we have other community across Africa. I'd like to give a quick shout to the community in Ghana, the Accra.net user group by Frank, the and uh, Samuel Adinery and also the Accra Power Platform also which are run by them and the Microsoft User Group Ghana by uh, Konde, Abu Konde. Also we have some in that we are collaborating with people in South Africa, Developer User Group, Johannesburg Office, TV65 User Group and uh, Johannesburg School of AI and Azure User Group in Johannesburg and we have other like JHB MS Developer User Group also the Cape Town MS Developer User Group. They are all developers user group across Africa that we work with one time or the other to collaborate in terms of learning, in terms of sharing idea and development. Now, coming back to our community reach, is something that is one thing we share idea. The other thing is to have impact. How do we make this solution? Because Africa is unique in terms of our peculiarity. How do we go to the grassroots, use the solution we have to build something that can impact life? So we have some quick video that we have here showcasing some of the highlight of what we did during COVID-19. Uh, uh, as our first strategy is to teach, let, teach our community, give them, empower them with knowledge. The other thing is to use the technology to do something that is relevant in order to change and see that this technology really works. So, um, Ahmed, can you start rolling the video? So, the first one is the one done by um, Olumide team because we collaborate with the student um, partners to also bring about a solution. So, there was an awareness board that was created because we noticed that there was a problem with the with knowledge and being able to mitigate that knowledge. You can you can roll it now. I think there's something wrong with the audio. Um, you have to share you know, the audio. OK. Generally, the concept of this awareness board is to, to bridge the gap between Nigerian community and understanding the COVID-19 when it first came out. And uh, because there's so many myths that came that it doesn't affect Africa because we are in the hot region. Um, this thing does not strive. So, the student partners, which is led by Olumide from that video, came about to create an awareness board using community service and the AI uh, uh, provision from Microsoft to build a bot that can easily give them a direction in terms of what to do, what is even COVID-19. And uh, surprising, we got it almost 5,000 a day 
and we have people across not just nigeria across the world that was able to see the bot and they were able to launch on the knowledge that this bot was giving and to to improve and to change the scope of things so i don't know whether the video is uh, can we play it now Okay, um, can we go to the second video if that? Um, uh, no problem, technical hitches. <laughs> uh, it's what happens when you don't uh, sacrifice to the demo gods. Yeah. <laughs> If uh, if Olumide is here, what if the video is okay? Okay, can we move to the next video? Have you unshared and then shared again and checked share um, select system audio? Uh, the advantage we have even the 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 um, the group that produced the app are on deck and they can share if uh, the video is not, uh, the audio is not coming up. So I'll invite Jim Oke to quickly give us an highlight of what they did in terms of the hub they created during the COVID-19. Jim Oke, please, can you just talk about the app while uh, the technical crew is trying to fix the audio of the, vid of the, of the, um, of the video? Okay. My name is Oluwa Sheyuluwa Womiju. I'm an MVP from Nigeria. Um, Oluwa Sheyuluwa Microsoft student partner from Nigeria. Our story started when we noticed that there was an awareness aware issue in terms of people knowing what the COVID-19 is and uh, be able to address them with necessary information to know how to prevent it and what to do. So the MCT tech community and also the Microsoft Student Partner came together in collaboration to create an awareness block. Yeah, so um, we created this chatbot uh, to solve this um, issue of awareness of COVID-19. Uh, we created it with the bot framework and Lewis. And basically what it does is to ask you a series of questions uh, that are COVID-19 related, uh, just to know the kind of symptoms you have. And in the end, it gives you awareness about the virus and what to do next basically. So you can see here, um, it tells you the possibility of you having the virus and gives you some next steps on what to do. You can see here telling you to stay home, avoid close contacts, click clean and disinfect, and so many other things that we use in cards here. And pretty much uh, this actually made impact in our community uh, with over 5,000 hits per day. And a lot of people are asking for more features. Even people from various countries are asking us to help them replicate this in their country too. And we are glad we we're able to do this. Yeah, the, the job was very, very important. Glad to do this all the way from Nigeria, the community, and also the student public. Thank you. Hi. Avis I Care is an app that helps employees to understand how much their employer cares about them. For employers, Avis I Care can be used to send out helpful LD tips to their employees, educating them on how to stay healthy. But then because of the current corona pandemic, Avis I Care has been improved so employers can self-send out LD tips based on the coronavirus pandemic. Employers can view most recent tips. They can also view all tips where they can choose to turn on or turn off tips according to their requirements. Here, they can also over their mouse on any of the tips to see the description. This description is what the employees get to see in a flow card sent to them on their team's app. The employees can also choose to acknowledge or dismiss any of these flow cards. 
for instance, here yeah, I have a stay informed tip telling me on how to stay informed and how to contact an healthcare provider if I have any issues. Also, I have a flow card here or telling me how to keep a safe distance with the person beside me to avoid the spread of coronavirus. Also, another thing that Care does for you as an employer is it gives you a deep report on all of your tips. So yeah, you can view the employees uh, acknowledge or dismiss any of your reports. That is a positive or negative response. You can also predefine your tip, your, your reports according to the tip, which I've just done here. I can see positive response and I can also see negative response. I can see those that shared my tips and unique response. Also, I can choose to view response based on timeline. So all I need to do is drag my radio button to the left or to the right as required. Also, Avis Care can be updated as an employer if you have more tips to give your employees. I hope this has been very informative. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think uh um, um, video uh, video. Okay. No, no, no. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let's okay. look at the upcoming event which uh Dad is sharing with us. Uh, these are things that we are uh, planning to do in the next um, uh, season. Uh, we're going straight to trying to do more and uh, we're starting a virtual series and each of these user group have their specified targets. Now, harvesting people from the grassroots, giving them the cost for the change and what they need to know and how to go about it. Uh, the developer ecosystem trying to help us to integrate the, the knowledge, the language that is necessary. And we all work together in building various application to change life and to give power, empower people to do more. Um, you can follow us on this link and um, if there's any question, I think uh, we can take the question now. Hello, hi Shay. Yeah. Thank you for uh, thank you for that amazing session. And uh, I think what I'll do is I'll condense some of the really pressing questions that we've seen come through in chat. Again, thank you guys for the amazing questions. Please keep them coming. Um, and I've summarized them into a few quick ones. And I think I'll start with the most pertinent one is how do we reach you? Right. Uh, that's the that's the main question everyone has asked is how do they reach you as uh, as as um, as community leaders, as communities? How do they know more about your events? So how do they reach you? OK, um, majorly our 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 major um, channel that we use are actually LinkedIn, Twitter and also I think well, um, Dara can help us share that page where it shows all the user group. And um, if, if you can find us on MCT Ninja Tech User Group on Facebook, and uh, we also run our series on uh, each user lead as their own wall where they present and they share their link. But our Twitter handle is MCT Ninja Tech user group, tech user group, tech and user group is UG. And that's where you can actually follow us on Twitter. And uh, my name is Sheyolua Wumiju. You can also follow me at S Oluwa Wumiju. S Oluwa Wumiju, that's my Twitter handle. And my LinkedIn is just find my name, Sheyi Oluwa Wumiju on LinkedIn. you see me there. And as a group where we're about to launch our website and the essence of this website is to do more and uh, to bring more dynamic, uh, exciting uh, community lead from that. 
to showcase what they are doing because there's a lot of user group in Nigeria, especially in Lagos, where we have over 21 million. We all cannot be on this on this deck today, but they are doing amazing things across Lagos. So also you can get so many of the user group on meetup.com. So uh, that is the way, that's where you can reach us and uh, we can guide you further if you have any other question. Okay, um, thank you. Thank you for that answer. Um, I hope that answers uh, the question we've been getting in chat. Um, and I have one other quick question for you. And now we're talking more around communities and community building. Um, and uh, I'll also ask uh, Maria and Scott, based on their experience, if they can also chime in here and, and, and share what they've seen. Um, communities, you've mentioned a lot of communities that you've worked with, from South Africa to Ghana, um, some in Kenya, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So, how do you ensure community collaboration? How do you ensure that communities can come together and work together and interact in a way that's mutually uh, beneficial? Because from the conversations we've seen from all the communities, one is the fact that you're all here together shows that you guys are already collaborating, but it also looks like you're also collaborating beyond Nigeria itself. So how does that how do you generally arrange that and you've already mentioned how they can reach out to you but how do you ensure it's mutually beneficial yeah um the the first thing we looked at um is to uh, i'll give you a typical example of the sample of what we did uh, recently and uh, that's uh, we, we we reached out to community in ghana and that's why i want to appreciate uh, frank and samuel Someone from Ghana, they have been amazing community lead that uh, our collaboration was strengthened in terms of not just development, also in terms of sharing knowledge. Like uh, sometimes we have events that we we invite ourselves, we invite ourselves to come to different cities, like Frank had been in Nigeria, I can't count it. Someone has to fly to Abuja for one of our community, which Lawrence was part of it. So what we do is that when you come in, we leverage on our knowledge, we share that knowledge, and we have like a baseline that I'm going to be in Ghana this month. You have to be in Nigeria. Like Dara asked to go to Ghana some time ago to meet with the .NET developer um, ecosystem there. So that is the way we have been doing that. We share knowledge. We collaborate and if there's any I, I know there was an issue with an iot problem that samuel has to work with our local team in order to bring about that solution then we were trying to do like uh, do like um do uh, attendance management solution using iot ai and community service and there was a slight issue i have to integrate them so we map ourselves and we are able to share knowledge and bring about better enterprise in terms of development. So that's the way we have outreach. Now, recently too, we are trying to outreach to not just the English speaking African country, we are moving to the French. I, I, we have been able to ally with people like Temi Tokwe from Côte d'Ivoire, Israel also from Côte d'Ivoire, people from Cameroon, like Gauti from Cameroon, and uh, Joseph Yobo from Cameroon. These are French speaking people. And we're saying, okay, what can we do together? Can we share this knowledge across board? Can we bring more people, especially from the Azure space? We're also launching not just within Africa, we, we, we were able to have this cross mapping to Zambia. We, we had a collaboration with Abad Zulu from Zambia, and also we had another person from Angola. Now, the unique, unique about Angola situation is that they speak Portuguese. How do we reach out? So this cross collaboration, cross mapping, have helped us to have a better bond in Africa. How we're going to do more? Like they has to fly to Zambia, you saw to Uganda, I mean, and also to Rwanda. Now the main issue, the main focus for him was to bring about power platform. How can this guy do more with power platform? How can they develop more apps? And it has invested a lot of things that it was able to have an and handshake with Uganda University. So we, we tried with cross mapping, 
bonding in terms of communication and sharing knowledge. Okay, thank you. Um, and I think uh, I'll ask Scott and Maria, when it comes to developers, communities and the work that they do, what advice would you give to African developers based on what A you've seen? And there's still a lot that has not uh, been shared. Like I said, this was purely a showcase of what's happening in Nigeria. This is not to say that the other countries aren't doing amazing things as well. South Africa is a pretty active space. Uh, Kenya is a pretty active space. Uh, Morocco, Egypt, really amazing hotspots. Um, and today's session was, uh, I hope nobody crucifies me in the comments. <laughs> it looks like a Nigeria only show, but I wanted to showcase what happens at a local space and influences the world around them. So over to you, Scott. What would you advise community leaders, developers, et cetera, when it comes to the community space? Um, the couple of things that come to mind initially, and I have experience in building up user groups, and I also work with the .NET Foundation, is that simply showing up is like the number one most important thing about community, letting people know that you'll be there for them, that you can help them in their process and that lifting up someone else, uh, whether it be amplifying their voice or giving them an opportunity to speak, doesn't in any way take away from what you're doing. So giving generously of your time, I think is more important than anything else. We as community leaders need to make ourselves available in the most welcoming way possible. And I think that the points that were made earlier about trying to be inclusive with regards to, to language, uh, with regards to age, skill level, and all those different things, a lot of us do this work not because we're paid for it, but because we're passionate about it. So giving generously of your time and of your knowledge to lift up uh, the next generation, I think is the number one advice that I would give people. I'd be interested in what Maria has to say. Uh, Thank you. Yes, yes, and to add on to what Scott said, lifting up people is very important. And we talked about reach across different countries and different countries speaking different languages. I think also um, sharing knowledge as well as practicing with other people who are less experienced speakers is also incredibly important. So giving your time to help other speakers learn how to present with confidence, those are huge things. I do this with people who are presenters back in Uganda and people can always reach out to me on Twitter as well. If they would like me to also spare that time for them, I would be more than happy to go through that too. Okay, Very thank you. Advice. Thank you. Um, okay, uh, a big, big thanks to thank to the amazing community leaders, Shay, Wale, uh, Toriola, all you guys, amazing work. Uh, I can't mention all of you, it's quite a number. Um, so thank you very much for sharing your experience. Thank you very much for sharing the work that you've been doing and uh, we've learned a lot from you and uh, it's great to see you expanding beyond Nigeria and sharing your experience. And this is also my challenge to all the other community leaders out there is reach out, network, build. We are here to support you. I am personally here to support you. That's my job. That's what I am paid by Microsoft to do is to actually come in and help you expand your communities, help you grow, help you reach other developers as well. And uh, you can always find me at lawrence.modoga at microsoft.com. Um, if you're worried, my inbox will be completely full of emails. Always feel free to reach me at LinkedIn. Same name. I'm very, very easy to find. I haven't seen another Lawrence Modoga over there. That's M-U-T-H-O-G-A. Um, and you can always find me there and I'm willing and happy to help. Now we're going to hop into the next part of uh, this session, which is upcoming events. Um, the community has shared what they're doing, the Nigerian community that is, have shared what they're doing in their space. But what is Microsoft doing? What do we have for you? So what's in our oven this time? And I'm proud to share that one of the things that we've been actually working on with the amazing For Africa team is a series called Azure Wednesdays with For Africa. And here we take on multiple speakers with multiple backgrounds and we actually bring them in and have a live session where we talk about a specific technology and we go in depth. We try and keep them short, try and keep them one hour long. We're trying to avoid the voice over PowerPoint because now I can imagine how many webinars uh, you develop 
all of us have been sitting in and we're trying to make it as fun and as interactive as possible. So far, we've been working with internal speakers, but we also want to expand to external speakers. And so if you're an expert in a space and you'd love to hop onto uh, a podcast uh, kind of session and share your knowledge uh, across Africa, please do reach out. We are willing and happy to host you. Um, and this is just the first of many. We've delivered our first three. We have another five coming down the pipe till the end of June. And after that, it's open season. And uh, we'd love to host each and every one of you there so that you can share your experiences with the rest of the continent. The second thing that we are working on and this is very, 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 very aimed at you guys, is a remote resilience hackathon. And I'm going to wear my, uh, I'm going to wear my advertising hat and go like, do you want $6,000 in winnings? If you do, then please do go and participate for the remote resilience hackathon. Uh, please do find the link there below. It's aka.ms stroke remote resilience. And this hackathon is purely based around the idea of enabling developers and organizations to work in a remote scenario. And um, if you go to the website, you'll be able to easily apply. We actually just launched it today. So you guys are amongst the first to know this. So please do go online, please do register, submit your projects and you stand a chance of winning up to 6,000 US dollars. We want to see the amazing solutions that you have. And I think Africa, can produce some amazing uh, solutions here and we are very eager to see you uh, there. In case you want to scan with the QR code, there's your QR code, it's aka.ms stroke remote resilience. Okay, and I'll move on to our last event and this was already shared at the beginning of Build by the amazing Donna Sakar and she shared that Next Tech used to be this huge Africa conference where we'd bring in people from across the continent and share knowledge. And it was amazing and it was brilliant. And we wanted to do one this year. But guess what happened? Coronavirus happened. And now here we are sitting in our houses wondering how do we get to deliver an amazing series of events? And this time, how do we bring in the community and empower everybody across the board. And this is what we've decided. We are building Power Africa. And this is a series of technical deep dives into whatever Microsoft topic you want. You can go in and vote and say, this is the topic I want to learn. This is what I want you guys to talk about. And if you want to sign up and share your ideas, share your views, please do go to aka.ms stroke power hyphen Africa hyphen sign up. The link is on the screen. Please do go in, sign up and register. And here is the best part is this is not just going to be Microsoft speakers. This is not just us bringing you our knowledge. No, we'll also have community speakers as well. And so if you are interested and you're an expert in a particular topic and you'd love to be a speaker on the Power Africa series, please, please, please do sign up there. Do reach out. We have an entire forum there and we can't wait to host all of you. And we'll set our series from July all the way to December. And we are sitting here with our fingers crossed, hoping if Corona disappears, we'd love to do a major live event towards the end of the calendar year. But since we can't predict the future, we will keep doing these technical deep dives online and we are happy to host you at each and every one of them. So again, please do sign up at aka.ms stroke power hyphen Africa hyphen sign up. It's a very easy process and we are happy to host you there. Um, if you like the QR codes and you'd rather use a QR code, please uh, do scan that. That should be uh, easy to scan and you'll be able to access it wherever you are. I'll leave that there. So I wanted to dedicate the next few minutes to actually having, it's very difficult to have a full blown discussion around uh, some of the things that we've seen around build, some of the new technology. A lot of the stuff that I've, I've shown you today was prepared uh, last week. So we didn't know what announcements were coming. And the last two days have been an awesome uh, set of hours where we've seen things like the fluid framework. We've seen uh, technology being demoed across the board. And uh, 
I wanted to ask, and you can uh, drop this in the in the chat window. What excited you the most about Build? What did you see that made you go, wow, I'd like to write code with that. What did you see that made you realize, hey, maybe it's time I worked on this project or I built something uh, around that? Please do leave your, your responses uh, on the chat uh, sidebar. Uh, that's to your right. We'd love to hear a lot more from you. Um, as we head towards the closing of this session, I want to talk a bit about some of that hot technology. And I mean, I have Scott Hanselman on the call and uh, I have Maria on the call as well. And so I'm going to make the most uh, use out of this as I can. Um, so Scott, you demoed some amazing tech uh, yesterday and I see people have said putting in some of the stuff that they really, really enjoyed. And I wanted to ask um, what other hot tech did you see or have you witnessed through Build that gets you excited? What makes you go, hey, I'm happy to be working at Microsoft and I'm happy to be building this stuff. I think the thing that I'm the most excited about is the idea that WSL2 uh, makes anyone's kind of random laptop just much more powerful than it was before. There are people all over the continent that have Windows on their machine and they might feel when they go to uh, a tutorial website and they get to that website and they start reading about how to learn to do something. Go here, click here, and then go to the command prompt, and then you see the dollar sign, and Windows people go, oh, I guess that's not for me, and you feel excluded. But now you can take that laptop, the one that you already have, and now you can run Linux on it, real Linux, uh, without having to do any dual boots, without having to do any weird partitioning, and it starts up in just seconds. Combine that with the Windows terminal, and suddenly uh, Windows itself has become more inclusive because we realize that the reality is that the whole world doesn't run Windows and the whole world doesn't run .NET. You can do Python and Node and Ruby and all of these great open source technologies and put them together. Uh, so I like the idea that we just made everyone's laptop that much more powerful and that much more flexible. Wow, I, I like that. That's that's actually a very, very interesting space. And I think I'll pivot over to you, Maria, and ask what excited you the most about Build? What did you see that made you go, hey, this is amazing? Well, I think Scott found, um, stole what I found the most amazing, which was <laughs> everything you can do with WSL, but also code spaces. I have to say that code spaces to me was the most interesting thing that was announced at Build. And for those of you who are not familiar with code based code spaces, it's Visual Studio Code Online. And I thought about how that can bring computing onto different devices that we typically didn't have before. So I can imagine this being used on a phone and especially in um, Africa, a majority of people access the internet through their phone. What that can do for the developer experience to me was one of the most interesting things at Build this year. So check out Code Spaces. And you've actually mentioned code spaces, and I see people in chat are like, yes, code spaces, .NET Maui, WinGet, Power Toys. I think this year was full of, and I think this is why I love Build, and, and this is why I, in, in an ironic twist, I actually love that Build went online this year, is we can finally bring in a lot more African developers to witness and feel that excitement that you usually just only witness when you are there. And now you can actually get online and see a huge spread of amazing technology that you'd normally have waited for two years, not two years, for two weeks until it's published and you have a, a blog to go and read or the YouTube videos are released and all that. And I think that's that's really, really amazing. Um, and uh, I'm looking through, this is now the Q&A section. If you have any questions you want to ask, anything you'd like to know, please drop your questions in chat. I will pick uh, a random person uh, on a, from our presenter panel to go in and uh, and uh, and and uh, and ask that question. Um, and to all of you joining, I see people from Zimbabwe, from South Africa, um, from Cameroon, from Lagos. Thank you guys. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for sharing uh, your time with us. We really, really do um, appreciate it, and we are really, really glad uh, to to host you here. So thank you for 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 coming in here. Um, I think. Uh, as uh, I see a few more, a few more questions coming in. Sorry, 
uh, and I need to check that. Oh, here's a very, very good question. And I think I'll ask this to my resident .NET developer, Dara. Why should I still write .NET today? <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good question. Um, now, I, I started writing to Sharp about 10 years ago, just a little bit of history around that. And um, I've, I started writing for Windows Desktop, then I move on to Windows phones, then to mobile apps with Xamarin, .NET, and I realized I could still write the same C Sharp I write on all the platforms that I can get out there. Um, I'm able to write C Sharp for cloud, AI, IoT devices, uh, it's just a whole lot of possibilities. So for me, I would rather use the C Sharp and .NET that I know uh, to expand my user base rather than go learn any language. Don't get me wrong, these other languages are awesome. The other frameworks are awesome. They do good at what they do. Uh, but for me, uh, writing .NET is just life changing. I could uh, think of an app idea right now and I could put all the pieces together with my C Sharp knowledge. I could just open up Visual Studio, start writing my code and then I'm um, deployed with the C Sharp language I know .NET, and .NET is uh, VB.NET, C Sharp, F Sharp, uh, well, C++ is also there. Um, so I can write that C Sharp and write it just once. I have my libraries package in one place, do Blazor for my front end, I do Xamarin for my mobile app, I write C Sharp for IoT. I can even do ML.NET for AI services. Uh, it's just that awesome that I can use C Sharp and .NET, the .NET family of languages to actually achieve all my goals as a developer and reach out to any kind of user that I want to reach out to. So that is why I would still write .NET today and that is why I will still keep on writing it for the next 10, 20, 30 years. Wow. I hope nice. that answers the question. I, th I think it does. Um, so Scott, you've mentioned WSL and uh, We've got a very interesting question here is, does WSL need Hyper-V to be enabled? That's actually an interesting one. It's actually a little bit more complicated than yes. So there's the virtual machine extensions to the, the, you know, the processor itself. Do you need to have virtual machine hypervisor support on your laptop? Yes. Do you need Hyper-V on? Kind of. It turns out if you go to Windows features in Windows and uh, you'll see Hyper-V proper, which requires um, Windows Pro and gives you the full client for uh, Hyper-V to run like a full virtual machine. Then you've got a thing called virtual machine platform and the hypervisor platform. It's a little bit lower level. You can actually run WSL on Windows home we worked very hard to make that possible so you don't need a pro license that's important we're also enabling with our friends at docker desktop docker to be able to do that also on windows home because a lot of students and a lot of people who just buy laptops at the shops have windows home when you have that it means you've got wsl you can do all the things we've talked about containers and all that but you can't go and run the hyper-v client and run a full virtual machine. So you're actually you have to imagine Hyper-V as a stack that includes that client stuff. You would basically enable the hypervisor platform, turn on WSL and that'll work great. Um, but you don't get the full Hyper-V with running virtual machines, an entire virtual machine without uh, Windows Pro. So a little bit of a nuanced answer there. OK, cool. Thank you. Uh, thank you for sharing that. Um, I see I had, I see I only have five minutes uh, left. I wanted to at least give everybody some time to go out, have a coffee break. Um, as someone has reminded me that we have Africans in the diaspora. Uh, thank you guys. Thank you for joining. We're glad to have you. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. That's my YouTube hat uh, coming on. Um, and uh, we're very, very glad to, to have you here. Um, with us. Uh, so I'm going to slowly start closing this session uh, by thanking everyone involved. I'd, I'd like to firstly start by thanking the amazing community members. Uh, thank you, Shay and team for coming together and sharing. Um, I'd also like to thank Scott, Maria, Mads. Um, we haven't managed to get him back and we are closing a bit early. Um, I know it's super, super early uh, in the US. Thank you for making the time to join. Thank you for uh, sharing all the information and for sharing your time with us. We are really, really glad to have you. Thank you very much. Um, 
and of course to the Microsoft team uh, that has made this possible, Dara, Ernest, Somet, the For Africa team, you guys, awesome work. Thank you for having us. But the most important person in this conversation is you, the guys on the other side of the screen. And while all I can look at here is a camera, and all you can look at is a screen with some weird guy uh, with uh, an afro that's completely refusing to grow and a beard that has decided to completely be a goatee. Um, you've shared your time with us and we are really grateful. Thank you for taking time to learn more about the communities around you. Thank you for taking time to learn and, uh, and, and share your time with us. We are super, super grateful for that. And um, I've seen some interesting questions as to what do I do next? What do I do next as a developer? Where do I go? One is there's a lot of learning material that is currently available on Microsoft Learn and Cloud Society. You can look those up very, very easily. So docs.microsoft.com will take you to Microsoft Learn and you can actually get started there. And we actually launched Learn TV, which is a series of videos and so if you're like me and you really don't want to spend too much time reading you actually want to see a walkthrough you can easily go into learn tv and do some amazing learning there as well um, if you want to give uh, cloud society a shot please do go check it out cloud society links you and builds an entire curriculum for you uh, in a sort of learning path um, and you can always go in and sign up we have a few hundred thousand people already on the platform and uh, it links you directly to microsoft learn and so that you're able to manage uh, your learning path and you're always able to do that. For those of you who are interested in diving deeper, if you're a community leader who's wondering how do I get in touch with Microsoft, please do reach out to me directly. I am always happy to help. Again, the name is Lawrence Mudoga. I probably should have put it on my slides. <laughs> so sorry, sorry for that. So Lawrence Mudoga, I will drop it in chat and uh, I will also share my LinkedIn profile as well. And so I will uh, give everybody just uh, a tiny chance. Sorry, community guys. I hope you don't mind if I ask Shay to represent you for this one. Just a few closing words and we can finally close this call and uh, Everybody can, uh, yes, everybody can enjoy uh, what's left of their evening, their afternoon, their night, or their morning. Depends on where they are. So, Shay, uh, a few closing words from you. Uh, well, uh, thank you, Lawrence. Uh, it has been an exciting um, time to be part of uh, people that actually do something at, in Africa. And as Lawrence said, it's just showcasing Nigeria. There is a lot of exciting places also in Africa that they are doing great things. And even in Nigeria, there are a lot of people that are also contributing to this ecosystem to make changes. And uh, we'd like to thank everyone that is on the deck that, uh, that have been able to represent their own user group. Also to thank the at attendees and those people that are hearing us say, we hope to do more and uh, we hope to build more solution and we hope to use all these tools that have been mentioned in build to make a change that impacts the grassroots. Thank you all. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Shay. Um, uh, Scott, Maria, um, thank you for attending this session. Do you have any closing words to the amazing African developers out there? Uh, I would say the next time that you come to an event like this, it's your job to bring 10 of your friends. <laughs> I like that one. OK, thank you. Um, Maria, uh, we're very glad to have you. Uh, any words to the African devs? Yeah, um, thank you so much uh, for having me. And please let us know what you continue to build. OK, thank you. Um, and I think I'll ask the communities to actually make a lot of noise about the stuff they share so that you can see it. Um, uh, and I think that would be really, really uh, amazing as well. OK, and so I will now close this right on the dot. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being an amazing audience. Thank you for all the nice questions. Thank you for being amazing developers as well. We're really glad to have you. We're really happy to host you. Have a lovely lovely day and goodbye and don't forget stay awesome